recording. All right, well, welcome everyone and happy Valentine's Day. My name is Stephanie Milroy. I'm the director of Healthy UNCG, and we're really excited to share this uh, webinar workshop with you all today. This is actually um, a first for us. We have partnered with the UNCG Department of Nutrition for years now. I was just trying to think of how many years it's been, and I wanna say we might be in our seventh year of partnering with them. Um, they have a fantastic team of 12 students um, who are uh, completing a 10 month internship um, in order to become registered dietitians. And so while we've done lots of different projects with them, um, one of the things that we have not done since we've kind of transitioned onto this virtual platform is to have them help us with some of our educational content. And so we're really lucky today to be joined by Laura McDevitt. She is one of our dietetic interns and she is going to be talking to you a little bit about plant-based diets and how they work, what they look like and, and what they mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Laura um, tell you a little bit more about herself and go ahead and share the presentation. Just as a reminder, we keep things pretty informal. You are welcome to type comments, type questions in the chat. Um, Monica and I will be monitoring that. And then of course, um, Laura will be asking for some interaction and then we'll be answering some questions at the end. So I hope you enjoy and thank you, Laura, for being with us. Thanks, I'm gonna go ahead and share so you guys can see. Okay, so like Stephanie said, I'm Laura, a dietetic intern, and I would also like to say that I did have help with this presentation by another intern. Her name is Grace, but she's in her clinical rotation, so she's not able to be here today to help me present. All right, so plant-based nutrition. This is some things that we'll be talking about today. We'll start with our objectives, um, talk about the different plant-based lifestyles, um, nutrient comparisons, nutritional concerns and challenges, nutrition tips and benefits, um, a price and recipe comparison, and some cultural considerations. So our objectives. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, everybody should be able to list three plant-based sources of protein, describe one health benefit that a plant-based diet can provide, and recognize the importance of including a variety of plant-based foods in the diet. So plant-based lifestyles. Okay, so this is a truth or myth just for an opener and everyone can unmute or they can put it in the chat if you think that this is true or if it's a myth. So adopting a plant-based diet means you have to give up most foods. Shout it out or put it in the chat. Myth, 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 myth. Okay, so it looks like most people say myth. And you are correct. So what is a plant-based diet? First of all, we shouldn't really call it a diet. It's more of a lifestyle. Um, and basically what you're trying to do or the goal of it is to maximize consumption of nutrient-dense foods with special emphasis on plant-based foods. So plant-based foods include fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, and nuts and seeds. And as you can see here, there is not just one plant-based lifestyle, there's several, and this is just a highlight of a few. So everyone's heard of the Mediterranean diet, um, which the X's mark what is included in the lifestyle. So as you can see, the Mediterranean diet includes everything, but has dairy, eggs, and meat in moderation. And then as we go down, you see the di two different types of vegetarian diets, but there's several more. Um, so lacto-ovo-vegetarian, you still include dairy and eggs and just eliminate meat and seafood. And then lacto-vegetarian, you eliminate eggs, 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 seafood, and meat. And then the vegan diet is solely plant foods with no animal products whatsoever. So some nutrient comparisons. So just as general dietary advice, um, in your daily diet, you should include carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So for carbohydrates, you wanna make that um, the most or the highest percentage of your total calories for the day. 
because that's what gives you energy and provides you with fiber. Um, and carbohydrates can be classic bread, um, rice, pasta, cereals, um, your sweet foods, cupcakes, cakes, all that kind of stuff falls into carbohydrates as well. Um, fats should make up 20 to 35% of your total calories. And those provide you with more stored energy when um, you haven't eaten in a while. It helps with vitamin absorption, protects your organs, and is part of some of the chemical messengers within your body. And you can find healthy fats through avocados, um, olive oils, canola oil, and nuts. And protein should be 10 to 35% of your total calories. Um, and of course, that's for growth and maintaining your muscles, for enzymes, hormones, and your immunity against infections. So a little bit about complete proteins, and this creates a lot of confusion, I feel like, in the public. Um, so proteins are made up of 20 amino acids, and nine of those are considered essential because your body can't make them, so you have to get them from your food. Um, so plant proteins, so nuts, um, seeds, soy, what grains, some grains um, are not complete proteins because they are missing one or two of those essential amino acids. Therefore, um, you have if you're following more of a plant-based diet and you're leaving out those animal foods, then you'll want to focus on eating just a variety of those plant-based proteins throughout your day so that you make sure you're getting all of those essential amino acids just throughout the day rather than all in one food source. So the only plant foods that do have all of the non-essential amino acids are soy, buckwheat, pea protein, quinoa, and chia seeds. And here is just for reference, kind of a comparison of how much protein is in different plant-based protein options. So I can, as you can see the tofu, there is 10 grams of complete protein in a half a cup. And then you can see the beans like the chickpeas and the black beans, um, they have a little less. And then you can see the quinoa and the oatmeal have even less than that. So when you combine, things like this, if you combine like tofu and quinoa in a meal, you're still able to get all of your um, protein needs throughout the day and pretty high quality protein. And this is just a comparison of what plant foods can offer the body versus what animal foods offer the body. So for animal foods, like I said before, they are complete proteins because they have all of those essential amino acids. And they also have lots of vitamins and minerals, but the downside is that they have, they're typically higher in calories and saturated fat, and they also don't have any fiber. Whereas plant foods, they are not complete proteins. Most of them are not. Um, so, but you can still get all your protein throughout the day, as long as you're eating a variety of those. They do contain fiber and lots of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. And they may be lower in calorie saturated fat, sodium and cholesterol, just depending on the way that they're prepared, which overall can help you become healthier and feel better. So some nutritional concerns and challenges. So these are the main vitamins and minerals of concern when you're transitioning from eating so many animal products to eating more of your plant foods. So first is iron. So heme iron is the type of iron that's found in animal foods, while non-heme iron is found in plant foods. And the thing with this is non-heme iron um, is more difficult for your body to kind of absorb. So it can be harder for people that are vegetarians or just don't eat much meat in general to get enough iron. But um, one tip is when you 
eat iron from plant foods, you can combine that with a source of vitamin C, which helps absorb it better. So vitamin C would be in things like strawberries. So like a strawberry and spinach salad, for example, um, citrus, bell peppers, things like that. And then vitamin B12 is only found in animal products and in some fortified foods like cereal and plant-based milks, but it's not in all, so you have to check the label on that. And vitamin B12 is super important because it regulates your nerve function. Um, it helps with production of blood cells and also DNA synthesis as well. Um, so, of course, if you're a vegetarian or you're vegan, um, they almost always have to take a supplement because vitamin B12 is even hard for people who do eat meat and a lot of animal products to get enough of. So that's something to consider. And then calcium and vitamin D. Um, we know that calcium and vitamin D is important for your bones. It's also important for your heart and for your nerves as well. So calcium is found in dairy, dark leafy greens, and tofu. So you see in the picture at the top is spinach um, and tofu. So that would be considered a calcium rich plant-based meal. And then vitamin D you get from sunlight, fortified foods, such as cereal and milk, and from fish and fish oil. And both of these um, are really important to have together because um, calcium cannot be absorbed if vitamin D is not present. So this is something that I feel like a lot of people are on calcium and vitamin D supplements because they are kind of hard to get enough of in the diet. And that's something to watch out for um, as you're transitioning to more of a plant-based lifestyle. So some tips on getting started and benefits. So when you're first getting started um, on a plant-based lifestyle, I've kind of broken this down into different categories. So for fruits and vegetables, of course you want a variety of fruits and vegetables of all different colors. Everybody's heard that before um, because they all provide different vitamins and minerals and their different colors can help um, with antioxidants as well. And then something else that really could have been a truth or a missed slide too, um, people tend to think that frozen vegetables and canned foods are less healthy than fresh produce, which is not true. Um, really when they're canned or when they're frozen, that preserves their nutrients and really makes it really good for everyone because you don't have to eat it immediately or within a certain amount of time and you just have them on hand. But with canned vegetables, um, make sure to drain and rinse those if possible, just to get off the extra sodium that isn't really needed. It was just for preservation. For meat and poultry, if you still um, really enjoy meat and you don't wanna eliminate that from your diet, you don't have to. Um, but when you do eat meat and poultry, try to go for the leaner options. Um, for poultry, just the chicken and turkey is pretty lean in itself, but just the leaner cuts of meat, or if you're getting ground beef, try to choose the 93 to seven ratio. And then for grains, um, try to make your grains whole grains, or at least half of your grain whole grains. So um, oatmeal, whole wheat cereals, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, things like that. And then for your plant-based proteins, like I said before, it's really important to make sure that you're eating a variety of those. So maybe having beans three days a week and then having complete quinoa three days a week and another meal, something like that. And then for dairy, if you still choose to include that in your diet, which is great, dairy is very important for calcium and vitamin D. Um, try to choose the low fat option. So maybe 2% milk or skim milk and low fat yogurts. And then for healthy fats, um, at, instead of using the solid fats like butter and margarine, try to reach for um, olive oils, avocados. Um, they actually have plant-based butters now, which to me tastes really good. Not quite like regular butter, but they're really good. 
Now, why should you follow a plant-based lifestyle? So it can help manage or decrease the risk for all of these conditions here. So it can help manage obesity because as you're eating more fiber and complex carbohydrates from the whole grains and fiber from the fruits and vegetables, it can help you feel fuller longer, which would um, mean that you're eating less overall and may help you lose weight. And it can decrease the risk for heart disease as you're eating less of those saturated fats from animal products, um, which would just help with your blood circulation in general. And then eating more fiber, like I said before, and fiber helps um, decrease your bad cholesterol levels. It can decrease the risk for hypertension as well. Again, because you're eating less saturated fats. Um, it can help manage diabetes because you are eating more fiber once again, fiber is super important, and complex carbohydrates in the whole grains. And when you do that, it kind of slows the absorption um, of your food and of the sugars in the food, um, which helps with keeping your blood sugar level versus if you ate, you know, like a processed carb, like white breads, or if you're eating sweets, it's going to shoot your sugar levels way up and then you'll crash back down again. Um, it can decrease the risk of cancer because you're eating more of those antioxidants compounds in the fruits and vegetables. And it can help decrease the risk for osteoporosis because eating more fruits and vegetables as opposed to those meats um, allows you to have more magnesium, potassium, vitamin C, um, which are all also important for bone health. Price and recipe comparisons. So I just wanted to show this because I've heard many, many times in my life that people can't afford to be vegetarian, um, but it's just more expensive is what they say. But as you can see here, those plant-based sources of protein. Um, so I've listed the canned beans, tofu, spaghetti, and quinoa and brown rice as well. Um, and you can see that they are half the price of your meat. And then also I wanted to point out that um, the cheese and the Greek yogurt, which are dairy sources of protein, are still a lot cheaper than meat is. So that's just something for your reference. And I also wanted to include a example of a recipe that I turned um, plant-based. So for this beef and vegetable lasagna, I replaced the beef with tofu. And why I chose tofu for this is because tofu is really great for crumbling and making it kind of have the same texture and feel as beef. And also tofu absorbs the flavors of things around it. So it's a really good filler for things when you're trying to replace um, meat and recipes that are maybe more hidden instead of, you know, like a chunk of tofu, if you were just making like grilled chicken or something. But another thing that you could do with this, if you didn't want to totally get rid of the beef, you could half the beef, which would also save you money and increase the amount of vegetables to still have a full and satisfying meal. And then at the bottom, I've listed how the um, nutrition profile changed when the tofu was substituted for the beef. So as you can see, the calories were reduced by over 100 per serving. The fat was reduced by five grams per serving. The cholesterol was reduced from 133 milligrams to 80 milligrams. And then the sodium was reduced some from 600 milligrams to 515 milligrams. And you can see also that um, the protein went down quite a bit, but like we said before, the tofu is a complete source of protein with all nine essential amino acids that you need. And then you've also got two different types of cheeses in there with more protein. Um, you've got all your vegetables and you also have those lasagna noodles for carbohydrates and a little bit of protein as well. So some cultural considerations. So no matter where, where you're from or what ethnicity you're from, you can still follow a plant-based lifestyle. 
And on this slide here, I just picked out four different countries um, and I listed some of their main plant-based foods. So you can see here, um, you've got a plant-based protein source, you've got some carb sources, you've got fruits and vegetables, and then other ways that you can flavor things um, without having to use solid fats like butter. So another truth or myth, since Beyond Meat, vegan chicken nuggets, et cetera, do not contain any meat, they are healthier. And you can put that in the chat or shout it out, whatever y'all want to do. Everybody saying myth, it looks like. Okay, let's see. Myth. So as these um, plant-based kind of meats or fake meat, whatever you want to call it, um, are becoming more popular and more and more companies are kind of trying to advertise to vegans and vegetarians. Um, they're not necessarily healthier, but some are really great options for people who really want to go more plant-based, but they also don't want to give up meat because they just really like their chicken and whatever, which is understandable. Um, so this is just an example of maybe one that would not be great to eat all the time. Maybe every once in a while just as a little treat, but here is the um, ingredients and nutrients in the Burger King Impossible Whopper. So as you can see from the ingredients list, um, the main protein is from soy and it contains several preservatives and also those vitamins and minerals added in. But in the nutrition information, um, for just the Whopper, no sides, just the Whopper, it is 626 calories with 32 grams of fat and nine and a half grams of saturated fat and 1,343 milligrams of sodium. So just for reference, it's recommended that Saturated fat per day does not go, go over about 13 grams. So this one Whopper would almost take up all of your daily recommendations for saturated fat. And then sodium um, is also pretty high. The general recommendation is 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. Um, so that's over half. That's just something to consider with that. But certain brands are a really good option. You just have to look at the labels on those and it can be confusing. But, you know, overall these plant-based um, processed foods may be a great option for those people that are really just starting out and they just wanna try some new things. Um, just watch out for the nutrition labels on those. And some other key points to remember is that meat and animal products are beneficial to keep in the diet, um, but just in moderation and try to prioritize the whole grains and the fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts as much as possible. And of course, limit added sugars, um, excess sodium, saturated fat, and trans fats. And here are my references. And you guys should have all gotten the handout, um, which has more websites that you can go to to learn more. There was one on there that has um, vegetarian recipes and you, there's a button, it's really cool. You just click surprise me and it pops up with a random recipe. So that might be a good idea um, to do maybe once a week and just make a random plant-based recipe just for fun. And there's also um, some general tips for shopping and meal planning on there as well. And now we have time for questions. Thank you, Laura. Um, there was a couple questions that popped up in the chat. Um, one was from the beginning when you were talking about um, healthy fats. Um, and I think the person was asking if uh, dried salty pumpkin seeds um, were considered a healthy fat. Yes, because they are a seed and they're not a solid fat, they contain those monounsaturated fats and some poly, I believe too. 
So yeah, that's a great option for um, healthy fats. Um, the other one was about um, a myth or truth. Um, this person has heard that soy is not good for you and has a potential to increase cancer cells. And they were wondering if that was true or a myth. So that's something that has kind of been researched and I looked this up myself not long ago. Um, as of right now, they're not really finding any solid proof of that. And there's so many good things in soy that they're having a hard time justifying why it would be bad. And then you also hear um, that soy does contain um, some estrogen compounds and people, particularly women, have questions about whether that will affect their estrogen in their body. But that's also something that hasn't been um, proven. Um, the only, I read a study that said um, one person had eaten like some huge amount of soy all at once. And then you could see that his hormones were altered, but that, that was an unreasonable amount of soy to eat. So no health um, ramifications have been proven that soy would not be beneficial to you. Laura, thank you. On your slide um, that you had showing the different amounts of protein um, and the different plant-based options, um, what, is, what does that look like compared to maybe some of the more common meat options like, you know, a few ounces of chicken or ground beef? Do you have any idea what the calorie and protein comparison is? I know there's not like a chart right here, but mm -hmm. do you have any right. on that? So usually your standard chicken breast would contain around like 20 or 25 grams of protein. But something else to know is that the body cannot absorb a massive amount of protein at once. It can only absorb, I have that written down somewhere, about 20 to 25 grams at a time. So if you kind of space out your protein in smaller amounts, it's gonna be absorbed more efficiently in your body. And I mean, if you just eat too much at one time, it's not gonna hurt you. It's just, you know, your body's not gonna be able to absorb it and it's just gonna excrete it, so. Right, great, okay, thank you. And then one more question um, I had was, um, are there some good, you know, maybe non whole food options? Like if we were, I don't know, at a convenience store or on the inner parts of the um, aisles at the grocery store, are there certain brands or certain options? I mean, I know we can find, you know, nuts and things like that there, um, seeds as well. Do you have any recommendations on um, more of the, or any, any non whole food options? Right. So more, you're talking about more of the processed items. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's so many out there. And I think yeah. you alluded to this when you were talking about like the, you know, vegan chicken nuggets or burgers. And so I find it a lot, especially among the like, like bars and, you know, things like that. There's so many things being pushed, but it's hard to decipher what's actually good or maybe based in that pea protein versus, I don't know, something else, something fake. Right. So once again, it goes back to reading that label. Um, maybe not looking so much at the ingredients because that can be confusing with all these words that nobody really knows what they are. I don't even know what some of them are. But looking and seeing your total fat levels and your saturated fats and your sodium. But some of the good things um, that I've tried before are like the dried bean kind of things like bada bean, bada boom. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but kind of things like that, where you know that you can see that it's a, a full like vegetable or a bean. Um, just use your judgment on that with kind of things. I don't know, like popcorn, popcorn is a great snack to have. That's more, a little more processed, but popcorn is still a whole grain. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things. Yeah, there's still, I bought some, um, plant-based taquitos the other day because I was curious about them um, and they they're frozen so you just pop them um, in the toaster or in the oven rather um, and they had soy as their like meat alternative um, and those are pretty good but you just have to read the label and make sure there's things that you actually recognize um, and if it physically looks like you know what the item is <laughs> If that makes sense.
It does. It does. Yes. Thanks. Um, any other questions that we have, you feel free to unmute um, or you can type it in the chat. And while people are thinking, um, I know we do offer some plant-based options on campus uh, through Dining Services, and I believe you can go to their website and you can actually filter by that. Um, I was just telling Laura before the call, um, I've just been added to a the start of what may be a committee. I'm not really sure what we're calling ourselves yet, but we do have some on campus that are interested in working with Dining Services and the local um, options around campus to um, be able to, to market what those options are a little bit better and help our employees and students find out where those plant-based options are and what or what the choices are on the different menus so that should be coming soon but i think you can filter a little bit on that dining um, uncg dining page and i think within the app too the uncg mobile app um, so more on that to come and then if there are no other questions i do want to remind you um this is the week where we'll be talking a lot about plant-based options um, our dietitian carrie culp who also works with our um, nutrition dietetic interns, she will be presenting on Wednesday at 11, um, a little bit deeper dive into some of the stuff that Laura presented today. And she's going to be talking specifically about um, the impact of plant based diets and um, versus low carb, high protein diets. So kind of looking at the two against each other and sort of the pros and I want to say cons, but what are the differences and how they might impact um, cardiovascular health. So um, if you're interested in that, that's also on our website, and you're welcome to attend there. Um, we will be sending out the handout and the recording, um, along with Laura's contact information, if y'all do have more questions. Um, but yeah, thank you, Laura. This was really good. It was a great for beginners and, or people who are just learning, wanting to learn a little bit more and understand it, because I, I do think it can be kind of overwhelming, and there's just mm. a lot of information out there, and it's easy to get sucked into the different blogs or social media accounts or you know we don't really know where the information is coming from um and so i appreciate you giving us some some factual based information and making it so simple to understand i really appreciate that thank you thank you for having me and for everyone listening and participating yeah we're going to be actually doing some more with our dietetic interns this semester um in two weeks i believe it is we will have let's see just had it pulled up here. Um, we're going to be having an Instagram series on food and mood. If you're already attending our food and mood series that um, Amber Reed has been presenting with that for us, um, there's going to be an Instagram series along with that. Um, and then starting in March for Nutrition Month, we will have the dietetic interns with us, I think every Monday, um, presenting on a different topic, starting with nutrition and the aging process. So be on the lookout for more of that to come. And uh, I just appreciate everyone's time today. If you do have more questions, feel free to reach out to us at Healthy UNCG. Or like I said, I'll be sending Laura's information along and you can contact her directly. Thanks everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, Laura. Thanks.